All right, welcome. This is just going to be a quick welcome and introduction video to this play series. This playlist is going to be about uh, making or creating an HTML uh, web-based video game uh, like the one that I have created here. I haven't actually created this game. I've just rebuilt this game. This is my clone of the classic uh, NES game Super Mario Brothers that I call Super Marriott Brothers since my name is Chris Marriott. Um, and as you can see here, I've got it sort of started. Um, um, some of it works, but um, it's not exactly working 100% yet. Uh, but I've got some of the bit, the the initial pieces together. And well, the point of this video series is to show you how I did that. And then uh, as I put the final pieces together, I'll probably um, take you along for the journey and see how I put those final last pieces together. Now. Um, that's going to be sort of the final state where I want to get you to is to a state where you could build something like this on your own and hopefully you will try that out and do so uh, yourself and please do share me share with me your successes. Um, but how we get there is going to be a, a little bit more of a journey and this journey is going to uh, parallel a journey that I took myself um, well almost I guess about eight years ago now eight years ago I found myself uh, without a job and uh, uh, wanting to build some more programming skills and I thought hey I kind of want to make a game I want I, I don't know how to make a game and I did a bunch of googling and I thought well what's the best way to make a game I was drawn to web games which at the time were becoming popular um, and, and 2d games like this were becoming popular again thanks to the popularity of, of mobile gaming at the time and and continues to till today and that brought me to someone so I want to do credit where credit is due uh, so I was Googling a bit and I found this gentleman who is a Googler, or I, I, I'm not certain if he still works at Google, but he did at the time. Um, uh, Seth Ladd is a programmer and a, uh, uh, well, it looks like he's still at Google according to this. Um, and he's he works at Google, but he is also, uh, he, he does a lot of presentations and he organizes uh, certain conferences, including, um, I believe, the Google I.O. conference, at least that's where I got uh, introduced to him um, and he's also the author of this dart programming language I don't know if you are uh, familiar with it I'm only familiar up with it because of Seth Ladd and my familiarity with him um, but the reason I became familiar with him is I in my googling I was brought to this here uh, uh, blog post of his that included a uh, YouTube video of his that was from now 2011 that's getting a little bit back there um, and I have taken some time in the last couple of years to update uh, what I've learned from him a little bit uh, to incorporate some of the newer technologies, newer ways of doing things. Um, but a lot of what he, he says in this video uh, is still very important and relevant. And in fact, this video, um, which I've got here, which is about a 50 minute video, is going to present very quickly and in a condensed way a lot of what I'm going to present in this video series. Now I'm going to go into a lot more detail in the video series. I'm going to fill in a lot of the gaps and the reason why is in my own personal journey when I found this video uh, I started watching it and I got into it I don't know maybe five minutes ten minutes in and I realized I was already lost so I paused it and I went and I googled some more stuff learned some more and part of the reason is at the time um, while I was uh, a programmer, I wasn't a JavaScript programmer or a web programmer, and so I wasn't as familiar with some of the things he was discussing, um, and, and, and you know, just some of the common things you might be familiar with if you are a web programmer. And so I had to go off and learn a little bit more about web programming myself, and so uh, I went and explored a little bit more. So I will share this in in the uh, con in the links below. Uh, but I went from watching this video to watching a few other videos. In fact, one of the videos that I went to is kind of already, I think my YouTube knows who I am. It's uh, a one, this isn't the video, um, but this it's by this gentleman, Douglas Crockford. So maybe I'll just jump over here, Douglas Crockford. He is um, a one of the uh, developers of the JavaScript language. He worked for a long time in the early years, uh, helping to develop some of the uh, accepted standards for the JavaScript language. Uh, it says here that he was popular, uh, or he popularized the JSON uh, uh, data format, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, something I'll talk a little bit more in this 
video series. Uh, and the JavaScript object notation uh, isn't just a JavaScript thing anymore. It's, it's now used by all kinds of uh, programming languages, including Java in some cases, to use um, uh, to, to just uh, store an object in a nice, simple, serializable way. Uh, but um, Douglas Crockford, how did I uh, become familiar with him? Well, again, I think I was maybe uh, pointed to him by Seth Ladd, or at least I found him during that same period, and I went and I, and I viewed a few of his videos. Uh, the one that I jumped on first um, was this one called the JavaScript Programming Language, and this is the one that I will recommend to you. If you are not a JavaScript uh, a pro yet, then if you go ahead and follow this JavaScript programming language uh, uh, video, you'll probably um, learn most of the important basics. Now, I augmented this by doing a few little side projects, you know, just uh, side little assignments uh, to make sure I knew what was going on. Uh, but here, this video, it's, it's fairly old, but I think it stands up uh, today because it, it presents the JavaScript programming language um, in uh, a context that uh, uh, a, someone who's already skilled at programming will uh, want, want to learn from. So instead of uh, getting into the JavaScript language as though you were a beginner at programmer, it comes at it as though you already know some other language, maybe Java, C, and you're just trying to learn what the JavaScript language is all about. Now, as I mentioned, this video is kind of old. You can see here it's a little bit long. Uh, I still think it's quite valuable. Go ahead, throw it on two times speed and see, uh, slow it down when you need to. Uh, but when you're done, you might think, okay, well, this is kind of old. You might want to learn about some of the newer versions of JavaScript, and I definitely recommend doing that as well. You'll, you know, one thing you'll notice is that the actual running of a JavaScript program, if you want to call it that, is actually inside of a web page. So JavaScript, a language, only exists uh, inside of a browser most of the time. Um, and that's because it's an interpreted language. It's not a compiled language. So if you're familiar with Java and, and C++ and so on, you'll probably compile those programs into some kind of executable and then you'll execute it. Uh, JavaScript's not that way. There won't be any compiler. Instead, we ask a different kind of program called an interpreter, uh, which is usually built into our uh, browser to interpret the language and to carry out the uh, commands uh, that it states for us um, because the interpreter itself, the browser itself, um, is a compiled program, is something that is an executable. So that means when you want to run a JavaScript program, you're going to uh, load it into your browser in the same way you would when you go to a actual web page. Now, here, this particular web page I'm loading from GitHub because I have a live version on GitHub. Perhaps I'll just show you that here in a second. I've got my, my GitHub code here. Um, you can go ahead and check it out myself. Um, if you check it out today, which um, it, I'm still in development, but it, you'll more likely be checking this out in the future, in which case it might be at a future stage in development. Now, I should mention I'm only developing uh, level 1.1 one, one right now, but um, in the future I might choose to add level 1.2 and so on. So who knows, over the next uh, number of years, depending on when you check this out, there might be a lot more developed here than there are there is at the at the moment. Uh, but the one thing I do have at the moment is you can check out this little link. This link is where I was already, which brings you here to the live version of my Super Mario Brothers. Now, um, I'm gonna be spending the next several videos talking more about this, but I wanna talk a little bit about how I develop. Now, one thing you can do when you develop is, um, well, you, you may already know this, if you go to your, uh, if you go to your browser, and you uh, either right click and do uh, inspect element uh, or inspect, depending on what browser you're in, it's sometimes something different, but inspect is usually what it's called. Or you do a control shift I, at least that's what it is in Chrome. It probably is similar in other browsers. I recommend if you're going to be developing uh, for the web, if you're developing for the web in a professional sense, then you need to develop for all browsers. So you need to test everything in all browsers. But if you're just developing, uh, as I do, which is usually for myself, 
uh, and I don't care if it works on all browsers, it only has to work on my browser. Um, I usually develop in either uh, Firefox or Chrome. Chrome is usually my default. Uh, I would have said, you know, five or 10 years ago, Chrome is the better one, but Firefox is definitely really strong and it might be the better one these days. So I don't want to, uh, you know, play favorites, but uh, those are the two I would recommend over other browsers. If you happen to have a favorite other browser, go ahead. And, and use that. I do think that the developer tools in, in both Chrome and in Firefox are really good. That's why I like to develop in them because what do I mean by the developer tools? Well, um, a lot of the times if you've been developing in a C++ environment or a Java environment, then you probably have been using an IDE uh, and you use that IDE uh, to actually execute your programs, which means you probably don't go through the actual process of making, building, and, and putting your programs together and then running them yourself. You just press a play button or something like that and then see what happens. Um, of course, that's not. You, there are IDAs that might help you do that here. That's not exactly how I run things. I'm a little bit more old school. So even though I do use an IDE, what I do when I want to uh, run my program is I just load it into my browser, usually by double clicking on the HTML file in the uh, in the directory. Uh, and once it is loaded in, I can always just uh, uh, reload it. Uh, let's see here, um, by just doing an F5 reload. You get you get uh, used to some of the hotkeys. F5 reload uh, will reload the page for you. So anytime I make some changes to my code, I just go ahead and hit F5 and it will reload the page. Uh, another little piece of uh, advice that works here, say instead of being actually on the website, you're now focused on uh, your, you know, you've got your console window up here where your output's going to be. If you hit F5 there, it will also reload the page. That way, you know, you don't have to be focused on the page to reload it. So this is usually my main way of executing. This is my play button, if you will, in the IDE is whenever I want to re-execute I just re go back to my browser window, which is usually also open, and I punch my F5 or I hit reload, whatever it is, um, and that will reload the page for me and let me to test it again. Now, you'll notice I've got these the console window open here because this is where any output that you've given to your console will go. Okay, uh, again, that's sort of system outs or, or C outs or whatever you might be used to in, uh, in uh, JavaScript, we call them console.logs and they will go out here. And so these are some console.logs that I have coming from my asset manager class, which is uh, used to uh, download my images before I use them. And you can see some of these images, bricks and grounds and, and Luigi and Mario and so on, are images I need so that I can animate them. Also in the uh, developer tools, we can find things like the uh, sources, which is the different JavaScript files, we can go look at them and look at the code. And well, that's not usually as helpful because we usually have it open in our IDE. Uh, but over here, what might happen is uh, here's where you can set a breakpoint. That's one thing that I do sometimes. Uh, uh, and we can step through over here as well. And then also, if you happen to have a, a crash for whatever reason, it will usually break on that line and it'll say, okay, this is maybe say, say, you know, this wasn't you know, this dot elapsed time uh, wasn't defined, so doing the plus equals on it, you know, causes some kind of error, makes, it, makes something, uh, you know, mess up, then we might get this paused on the error here, we might get some, you know, on the watch list or out here, we might see what the values of some of these variables are, and when we do that, and we might see that in a future video when I debug some things, we can highlight over, um, you can just drop our mouse over some of these val values, and it will tell us what the value is when it paused it, or before it paused it, before the error and the crash. Uh, and so these are just some of the ways that we develop in on the web that might be slightly different than developing in other environments that you might be used to um, already. Okay, these are usually the only two tabs that I end up going to. Um, <clears throat> you might end up going to the elements tab if you happen to be doing HTML actual development. We, we aren't gonna be focusing on the HTML as much as, as we are gonna be focusing on the code. So we'll be looking at the sources and the console out for our debugging purposes. Now I did mention I use an IDE. So which IDE do I use? I use uh, a .NET, um, the Visual Studio um, um, by Microsoft. And that's just because I'm, as I've already mentioned, I'm a little bit old and I've uh, been doing this for a while. 
uh, and I happen to be used to this IDE. I don't think there's anything particularly um, good or bad about it other than Microsoft has uh, for a long time been a leader in a lot of really good IDE based tools and so I've got used to some of those. Some, you know, it's fallen behind on in, in the more modern era here, um, but I think it's always been a very good tool. And then also uh, for your own sake, if you have a preferred tool, if you already have an IDE that you're familiar with, for instance, I bet you there's a JavaScript plugin that you can use for it already. Um, or uh, there's a couple uh, ones out there that I think uh, lightweight ones like Atom, that might be useful. So pick whichever one you want. I use mine mostly as a text editor anyways, uh, a text editor that knows what language you're writing in. So it gives you cool little highlighting like that is also helpful. And that's basically all I use it for. So, um, you know, as there's this play button here, I don't know, it says I need to, I think you need to set it up. Uh, I haven't set it up. I've never pressed that button. Uh, I, I press this one up here, save all, save all, and then go reload my web page out here. Okay. So, these are the pieces that you're going to need if you want to engage in this video series. Uh, and then in the next couple of videos, once I get you started with that startup code, we'll start animating Mario and seeing how we can get things going. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in that next video.